In my last video, I went over how and why we would write automated tests for our JavaScript applications. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use test-driven development to improve the way we write automated tests for our apps. So what is test-driven development? Well, really, it's just a technique that we can use that will help us write our software by writing our tests first. The first thing we do is write a test, a test that will fail because we haven't actually written any production code yet. Then we write just a small amount of production code to make that test pass, and then we can refactor that code and run our test to make sure we haven't broken anything. And then we just repeat this process over and over again. We write a failing test and then a passing test and then refactor. So I have the same app that I had in the last video, which is just a basic express app that has a post request to create a new user. And when we try and sign up with a username and password, uh, we might wanna validate the username, validate the password, and then save that user to a database. And what we're gonna focus on again is the validate password function. We want some logic in here that makes sure that the password is valid. And for this app, it's gonna be the same as last time. I wanna make sure that the password is at least eight characters, characters long, um, contains at least one letter, and contains at least one number. So this is the logic that I want to be implemented in here to make sure that a password is valid. And instead of writing this code, then writing the tests after, we're going to use test-driven development to create this logic. The server code is really just here so that we can see how this would fit into a bigger application. But all I really am focusing on right now is this password logic. So what I'm gonna do is create a new file uh, that will be called validate password. And this is where I'm gonna put my function that will contain all the logic that will validate the password for me. And since I'm using test-driven development, I'm immediately going to need my validate password.test.js file so I can start writing tests immediately. Anytime I wanna do something, I'm gonna start with the test file and then implement code in my validate password.js file. So right now I know that I'm gonna to wanna to use a function that is called validate password and that will exist in the validate password file. So I'm gonna call this function and test that it works in the way that I want. Uh, but before I can do that, I'll need a function validate password to be exported from this file. And I'm not gonna write any logic right now. I just need a bare bones function so that I can start implementing tests and running them and using test driven development. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is start with a very simple test. I wanna test that uh, this function returns false, meaning that it's an invalid password uh, when it's given an empty string. Yeah. So this is one simple test right now, and it's important not to write more than one test to write too much logic at once. So I'm just gonna focus on this test for now and nothing else. And if I run my test suite using mpx jest validate password.test.js, I should see that it runs this test, there we go, and it failed because the function is returning undefined, it's not actually returning false. So now, that I've written my test and it's failing, I've got that red. So I have to go in here and make this test pass by writing the simplest amount of code I can just to get that test to pass. And this test is just checking to make sure the return value is false. So this return false will make my test pass. There we go. And there we go, my test is passing. So clearly this is preposterous, this is crazy. This function doesn't even come close to what we actually need it to do. It's just making this one test pass and that's it. But that's just because we don't have enough tests yet. The more tests that we actually add in here, the more valid, the more complete this function will become. And this is how test-driven development works. You just do things very iteratively, very simply, and as you build up your test suite over time, as I add more and more tests here, this function will become more complete. But it's very important that I don't just try and implement this function all in one go at once. I want to do it incrementally. So I'm just trying to make this pass every single time with the simplest amount of code I can write. So now that this test is passing, I'm gonna write another test that should fail. Now I could write a bunch of tests here that just just check the return value is false and those would all pass and that wouldn't be much fun. So the next test I wanna write is for a case where this should return true, where the password is in fact valid. No sleep, call me jet lag, baby. Yeah. Count on this page. 
So now I'm testing that if I have a password that it has at least eight characters, at least one number, and at least one letter, that this should be true. And if I run this test again, we should get one passing and one failing. There we go, I've got my failing test. So again, I've got the red. Now I need to make this green by going into my function and writing just enough code to make this pass. And the simplest bit of code that I think I could write here, it would be to maybe check if the password is eight characters. So if, uh, well, I guess I need to accept a password parameter. If the password length is greater than or equal to eight, then we'll return true, otherwise we'll return false. So if I run this test again, there we go. Now everything's passing again. So this function is clearly still not complete. It's not really doing the validation as it needs to, but it's worth noting that these two tests are complete. That even though this function is only doing a tiny piece of what it's supposed to do, these tests never have to change. Because if I give that function an empty string, it should return false, even when it's fully implemented. And when I give that function this type of password, it should return true, even when it's fully implemented. So each of the tests that I write are complete tests. And all we need to do is just keep adding more and more tests to this test suite to make it a more complete test suite. But we'll never have to go back and change these tests. So let's add another test. No sleep, call me jet lag, baby. So this time I'm giving it a string that is eight characters in length, but it only contains numbers, it doesn't contain a letter. So this should return false, but if I run the test suite, I'll see that this one is in fact failing because there's no check to see if there is a letter or not. So what I need to do now is go back into this function and actually make this test pass, again, just through the simplest code I can possibly write here. Money coming gone. So I've just added into the if statement here a regular expression check to make sure that there is a letter within that password, which should make this return false if it only contains numbers. And there we go. So I went from red to green, and now I could go and write another test, but in this case, because all my tests are passing, because I'm currently in a good state where everything is working, it can be a good opportunity to refactor. And I actually wanna switch up this code just a little bit uh, to make it a little bit cleaner. And I think I see a pattern emerging here and I wanna make sure that my code adapts to that pattern a little bit. So I'm just gonna refactor quickly. Let's get straight to it. Been a businessman. So now instead of putting all of my checks in a single if statement, I'm gonna go line by line doing these checks, storing that value into a variable. And then at the end, I can just return the Boolean value of using the logical and on all of those variables. So if I run this test again, let's see. This should hopefully still be passing, fantastic. Uh, and I've just, cleaned up my code a little bit, just refactored it a little bit. So we're always going through this step of create a failing test, make that test pass, make it pass quickly and simply. And then once it's passing, we can start to refactor. And this still isn't doing exactly what I need it to. So I still need more tests to make sure that this is gonna work in the exact way I need it to. And again, you might be tempted to write multiple tests here, but it's really important that you go test by test very iteratively through this process. And it can seem a bit weird to do things this way, to only write a little bit of test and then a little bit of code and then a little bit of test and always be switching back and forth. But there are a lot of benefits to coding this way. And I think the biggest benefit to me has been that it makes sure I don't miss a test. If I write a bunch of tests at once and then try and implement all of them, or if I write my code first and then try and write the tests after, there's a good chance that I will miss a test case, that I'll have some sort of criteria in my logic and I would have missed it in my test case. And if something changes in the future, it might break my code, even though my tests are still passing. So by doing it this way and being somewhat strict in that you only write a little bit of test and a little bit of code and you go back and forth a lot, you're much less likely to run into a situation where you've missed a test because every single time you're writing a test, the only thing you can do to make that pass is write just enough logic to make that pass. So you're not gonna fill up this function with a ton of logic that doesn't have tests for it. So I'm gonna continue with this process and just write a few more tests one at a time, switching back and forth between the test and the production code. So now I have a test that passes a string that's eight characters long, but it has no numbers in it. So if I run this test, I think it should fail. It does because I need to go back in here and actually verify that this contains numbers, or at least one number. 
So I updated the code and now this passes and now it's time to write another test. So I'll do the same thing, but I'll make them all uppercase just to test this case. And this passes, so this is fine. So now I'm passing a letter and a number, but it's too short. So I wanna make sure this one returns false and this already passes. So these last two tests I wrote, they already passed and that's good. I can keep writing tests even though they might not fail because I wanna make sure that these cases are tested. And even though the tests already passed, that's still good because I need these to stay here in case I update this function in the future. I need to make sure these things have been tested. And all of these tests so far have been written in their own test functions because each of these should really be testing a single thing. And I've separated these up into the individual things that I wanna be testing. Uh, but this one right here, is testing the valid password case. And I am actually gonna put two expectations here, which is fine as long as they are definitely testing the same thing. So what I wanna do here is add an uppercase letter because I want it to return true given a password with eight characters or longer, a letter and a number, and I don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase. So uh, usually you wanna break your tests up into the individual units, but if I am testing just a single logical thing, then multiple expects in here will be fine. So if I run this test now, hopefully this still works, but it doesn't, it fails because on line 10, when I have an uppercase character, it's actually returning false. So it doesn't recognize that an uppercase letter is a letter. And that's because in here, I'm only checking for lowercase letters. So if I just also check for uppercase letters and then rerun this, there we go, we can see this passing. And again, I'm only writing code that definitely has a test. So everything here has a test related to it because I couldn't write any production code until there was a test testing that thing. Uh, and I'm gonna add maybe one more in here that contains uh, both an uppercase and a lowercase and is eight characters long just to make sure I've, I've tested most of the cases and this is still passing. And now that this is all working, I can actually bring my validate password function into my server side code. So this is my code that's actually receiving the HTTP request from the client. Let's just bring in validate password. And then I could call this function in here to check if the password passed in by the user is valid. So these automated tests that I've written here aren't testing my server side code. They're not testing my client side application. They are just testing this single piece of functionality that will validate a password for me. And this function is complete for what we need it for. And we built this using test-driven development where we write the test first and the test fails. Then we write just enough code to get that test to pass and then we can refactor. Remember to build up your test suite and your production code incrementally. Don't try and code too much at once. And remember to practice writing automated tests in your applications and using test-driven development. And it can seem really weird in the beginning and kind of like a waste of time, but it's so worth it when you actually have a test suite for your app and you can just check to see if everything's working just by running a simple script. Went from MIA to LA on the run like I don't got in the state. 